Um, cat hair! <laughs> These cats are really distracting. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I thought I'd drop some super quick tips on renovating or remodeling your house. So if you're going through or you're thinking about going through the process of updating your house, I'm gonna lay down a few tips that you need to consider before you actually go through the whole process. So without further ado, here we go. Okay, so uh, step number one, and these will be in random orders, so it doesn't mean you have to do things in this specific order. Um, I'm just relaying the steps or the tips to you. So, and I've written them down, so if I'm looking down, that's what that is. Uh, tip number one, you need to gather a team. Cat hair! <laughs> you need to gather a team. So you need uh, your builder, you need plumber, you need an electrician, um, and beforehand, I suggest that you start with a surveyor beforehand because you need to know if there's any um, asbestos in your building, depending on the age of your building, um, any structural defects. Um, surveyor is absolutely critical. Um, and you, you will have this done anyway beforehand, before you actually purchase the property. Many of the banks have this as a prerequisite, that the, the property has to be surveyed um, as a part of their insurance to lend you the money. So uh, pay attention to your surveyor's results. Whatever the surveyor has identified um, in his survey that does affect the property, take that on board, obviously, before you start to remodel. I opted to go with these people, so your builder, uh, electrician, plumber, I approach them separately. So you can go down that route or you just hire one contractor, I think that's what they're officially called, and they will handle the whole thing for you because what a contractor does, they have their own individual people, so they'll have their connections with plumbers, electricians, builders, and whatever you need. Second thing you need to do, you need to get some quotes in. So once you have your team, you have your peoples, I suggest that you approach three different tradesmen under each jurisdiction. So if you need a builder, approach three different builders, uh, three different plumbers. You can go up to more. It depends on how specific you are. This allows you to get a more concrete and concise picture of what a, a quotation should really be. So if you have someone, I think this kind of goes without saying, if you have someone quoting £20,000 for the job and you have someone else quoting 10000 or somebody quotes 300000 then you will see that there is you know, a wide variance. So this allows you to create uh, the best average that is an approximate and a good reflection of what the job actually costs. So in terms of where you find these tradespeople, you can look in your local yellow pages or look on Google. Um, for me, word of mouth works and I would recommend the same as well. Uh, a lot of the advice I would give kind of comes from my experience so you know other people might have different advice but this is what worked for me so the team that I built up were people that were affiliated with each other so my estate agent recommended the plumber the plumber recommended the builder and the builder recommended the electrician <laughs> so everyone knew each other and because I have moved into a small town everyone works with each other so they're able to attest to each other's you know their skills and what their workmanship is like so that's the route that I chose but for you you could you know go on to Google um, you know ask your friends family if you are going to choose people that you don't have the um, the best you know known history on so you obviously haven't worked with them before or you don't know anyone that has um, I would suggest to obviously look at reviews so then I think a lot of people nowadays they have Facebook pages so hop onto the Facebook page look at the reviews you know you have to review these people's work and uh, here in the UK a lot of people are registered they're registered with a lot of bodies um, so if there is some kind of registration that's awesome but I know that you're probably very likely to want to save money so um, the more expensive someone is is the more likely they are to be registered with all these big bodies the cheaper people obviously you know they, they won't be able to afford to do that which is why I recommend to go with word of mouth otherwise look at the reviews it, what I also did was when I was getting some of my quotes in I asked if they had any um, previous customers numbers that I could contact so that's another tip you could try doing that as well but what you want is the assurance that these people are going to do what they say they're gonna do you know workmen can come in they call them cowboy builders in the UK they can mash up your whole entire house <laughs> so it's important that you choose somebody that is uh, they're able to do the job and do the job well at an affordable price obviously but do not this is another huge tip do not base everything on price 
don't go for the cheapest option this is why it's important to quote and it's important to work with people who have been recommended personally everyone's pretty straightforward in terms of their quotations uh, you know a plumber will just come around and you, you tell them what you want done electrician you tell them what you want done the builder I think is is where it gets a little bit complicated because maybe um, other builders work differently but I know for my builder uh, he quoted for his labor and he quoted for basic paints and basic some other basic auxiliary um, you know bits and pieces so like skirting boards and um, architrave for the door and you know this is another thing you need to be very specific in terms of what you want so before anything else that's why I said before this is in no particular order I think the very first thing you need to do is you need to find out what I want done to this house so if you want to rip up all the skirting board take up all the flooring it depends on the age of your house as well so you need to identify exactly and it's important for you to be precise when I tell you my builder charged for um, re removing wallpaper, <laughs> you know, everything is itemized and billed. So you need to know exactly what you're going to do. If you want to take the architrave from around the doors, that's another job. If you want to apply new skirting, that's another job. So everything has to be detailed. If you're not too sure, then you can go through the process with your builder, but that has to be established before you start to sign anyone on because what you don't want to do is you start you know going through the project then you realize okay this needs to be done and then your builders like oh well that's that's another price that's not included in the quote <laughs> so yeah be very clear on um, the things that you want done the builder basically quotes for his labor paint and all the other stuff so um, bear in mind that you are going to have to buy all the other bits that he hasn't quoted for so um, in my situation I had to buy all the the, the basic paints he supplied but the, the nice paints, <laughs> you know, the, the pimp, the house paints, I had to pay for. So basic paints and beautifying paints, should we say, they are different prices. Flooring, you're gonna have to pay for that. He's not gonna charge you for glue, what? knives, they're gonna need crowbars, they're gonna need all these all these other things. They're not going to charge you for that. That's that's what the um, their whole quotation is for. But all these supplementary things, all your beautifying things, like I said before, you're gonna have to pay for. So um, yes, expect your builder to quote for his labor and some other basic auxiliary things, but check what he's quoted for and then what you need to pay for. And by the way, when you are selecting your team, for me, it depends on whether you're going to be on site or not, if you're gonna be on site or off site. So if you are gonna be on site while all these works are taking place, try to elect to work with people that you get on with. When I was looking at the people to work with, I was mainly paying attention to very small things. I'm an empath, okay? It's important for me to be able to get on with a person. And if you're going through something as personal as a house, then you don't want people with bad tempers working upon your house. Let me also explain this because this is a spiritual channel as I go on. Everything will have an underlying theme of spirituality. So this is why it's important for me to get on with the people that are gonna be up in my yard day in, day out. <laughs> because if they are working on your property, right? You're gonna live in this property. Everything is energy transfer. So if these people are bad tempered, right? They're messy, they are inconsiderate, that energy is going into your house so you know just skip past this bit if you're not a spiritual person this is fine but for all you spiritual people out there this is why it's important for you to choose somebody that has um, the kind of energy that works for you and with you because you're gonna see them every day and the energy of their work is going to be in your house so choose very wisely that was a criteria for me but it might not be a criteria for you tip number three consider the age of your house my house was built in the 50s or 60s i really should know this but i don't um and as a result you know it it's an old house with a lot of old stuff going on because of the age of the house i had to update my electrics so the whole electrical um wiring system had to be upgraded so you need to consider that and that cost me around um just under two thousand pounds to rewire the whole thing. I had to get a new fuse box. Electrics hadn't been updated since the 60s. So if, you're, if you've bought an old house, you have to consider your electrical work needs upgrading. Concurrently, 
your electrical items are going to need upgrading. If you've, for me, I moved from an older house um, into my house, up, upgraded the electrical system. Hey presto, none of my appliances worked anymore because I got a brand new electrical system. I had to upgrade probably 500 pounds worth of electronic devices. So budget for that as well. Electrical upgrade means electronical devices might need to be uh, upgraded depending on how old they are. Asbestos! <laughs> if you've purchased an old house, asbestos is probably going to... Asbestos is probably going to be a problem for you. Uh, so like I said, my house is built in the 50s, 60s and if you're not familiar with what asbestos is, for me I thought it was some kind of a disease. <laughs> <laughs> probably not disease but some kind of infectious well it is infectious but I don't know I was just confused about what what asbestos was to clarify asbestos is essentially it's something that the um, builders of old they used to use it um, in all of their uh, building materials but you know fast forward a couple of decades we have found out that they are not the best for humankind so once this thing is released the asbestos the little particles of asbestos is released once you disturb it from all those years ago when it was placed there um, it hooks onto your lungs it goes through the respiratory system hooks onto your lungs and basically doesn't come off and it eats away at the lungs this is why there's such a big hoo-ha about asbestos very very dangerous so if you see during your surveyors report that they have reported um, asbestos being somewhere then pay very close attention don't be scared um, a lot of builders my builders are just like ah asbestos that's okay <laughs> Builders are well familiar and they're well versed on the handling of asbestos. Don't panic, it just means it has to be uh, professionally removed. Now, um, the, the survey report will identify where in the house the asbestos is. So uh, in my situation, the asbestos was in the kitchen roof and also on the flooring of the kitchen and the front room. Another cost implication of asbestos is it has to be professionally removed. Uh, it depends on the kind of asbestos it is as well. Actually, this is getting kind of complicated. So there are two types of asbestos um, and the survey report will probably um, outline which type, if any, is found in the house. Uh, I think that the second grade, type two or something like this, you can go and do your own research. Type two is extremely dangerous. This is the one where the men in the white suits they have to come with their respiratory masks and everything to, to dispose of that building material wherever it's found in your house they're the ones that have to manage the disposal of that the other grade the type 1 or whatever it's it, it's labeled as type 1 or type 2 your regular builder is able to dispose of that I had a surveyor's report that said asbestos was found in the property but what I did was I went and uh, I went and had a supplementary um, report done so I had other surveyors come in tested the whole entire house because I was panicking um, but yeah I probably suggest that you do the same thing the report the report is not that much it's probably like 60 pounds get a second set of surveyors in that test specifically for asbestos and they will identify where in the house the asbestos is and then what type of asbestos you have so definitely get the yeah, actually yes get a second set of um, report done on asbestos if asbestos has been found by your initial surveyor. You can have the uh, the same people, they can dispose of it for you or if it's the non-threatening type, I mean they're both threatening but the regular type, your builder is uh, specifically trained on how to dispose of that. So this is one thing you might want to consider if your uh, surveyor's report has uh, shed light that there is asbestos in the property. When you're quoting with your builders, ask whether they have certification for them to be able to dispose of asbestos uh, related material. So asbestos is out of the way. Another thing to think about is uh, 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 heating. You're gonna need a new central heating system if your house is old AF. <laughs> So I, there was no central heating here, absolutely no central heating. I had to install new central heating. So new radiators, uh, hot water in the house, just yeah, the whole shebang, I needed central heating. That's gonna cost. I paid around uh, 3,000 pounds. I think it was 2,000, 2,005, 3,000 pounds. Your plumber is going to do that. So your plumber and your builder, they kind of work together in order to get things done. This is probably why it's important to have people that are kind of familiar with each other working together because you want that good energy in your house. <laughs> Another drawback of an old house, 
is it's gonna be cold AF. It's gonna be freezing. I don't know what it is about older houses. They're sturdy, so don't get me wrong. I would, I, I don't think I'd ever live in a new build, but older builds are cold. The walls are cold. I don't know if it's um, to do with the insulation because my house is quite uh, well insulated um, when it comes to, you know, the, the loft insulation. All those other bits is fine. It's just in the walls. I don't know what it is. They're, they're rock solid. It's a properly well built house the adverse effect is it gets a lot colder. I kept some of the original flooring, but it means that that room is going to be a lot colder. So you might want to consider either underfloor heating for older houses, or um, if you can manage it. For me, I, I like a cooler house. I don't like anywhere that's too hot because I get quite hot. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna have to put laminate flooring everywhere or have the flooring covered. You can't have expo exposed flooring. I do in my bedroom and <laughs> that room is cold really cold cold af so yeah consider that older houses means the rooms are going to be colder the whole house is going to be colder period. another thing about older houses you're going to need extra long curtains older houses you have to go right up above the uh, window frame in order to hang your curtains because the lentils are made out of steel this again don't quote me um this might be the same for uh newer houses I doubt that though because I didn't have this kind of issue in new houses that I've lived in so um, that's why I'm saying don't quote me but for my old house that I lived in the because of this steel work that's above the windows there might be in newer houses too but in older houses I think they're bigger or something the builders have to go quite high up so you are gonna have to buy longer curtains longer curtains are more expensive which means more money uh, which adds to the whole entire cost of your renovation budget so bear that in mind Consideration number four, are you going to live on site or off site? Now there are pros and cons for both. If you're gonna live on site, obviously you save money. You can see the progress as well. You're there day to day to see how things are progressing. If there are any problems, then you're on hand to just, you know, really, really easy remedy them. And you can very quickly make important decisions. So, so those are the pros and probably there's more, but that's what I can think about at the moment of living on site. Uh, Cons of living on sites, which I went through, and these are things I didn't even think about. Oh, the dust, dust. You would be surprised, right? Even though I wasn't knocking down walls, but it, dust goes everywhere. I've still got things with dust inside it. So you're gonna have to invest in, um, your builders will have dust sheets, but you know, it depends on how they work. Builders tend to work from room to room, and that's another thing. If you think you're gonna say to your builder, work over there and then work over there and then work down here. No, builders tend to work um, from the top down. So if you bought a single story house, uh, they're gonna work upstairs first and then they go downstairs. I thought this was really weird. Just work, work wherever I want. These cats are really distracting. But no, they have their own particular way of working. Um, yeah, and that's another thing. You, try and be a people person because there are going to be things that come up during the project um, that might they're going to need addressing and they might rub you the wrong way you know if the resolution isn't um, the best for one party or the other but you know put put your kind of um, your harmonious hat on whereby you're going to try to get the project done as harmonious harmoniously I cannot talk as harmoniously as possible so tr you know try to always smooth things over so yes dust so that's another thing to think about if you are asthmatic if you have respiratory problems then um, consider probably going off-site instability now um, you're gonna have to be a kind of bare grills character if you're gonna live in a house while it's being done up it's I'm not gonna lie it's not for the faint-hearted it's a lot of work for example if they're working on the kitchen that's gonna probably take about four weeks where you can't you know exist in your kitchen properly it's gonna wreak havoc on your ability to function. You don't realize how essential a house is for your basic well-being until you know you can't function properly. So really bear that in mind. If you're gonna be on site, your functionality is going to be disrupted heavily. <laughs> so get ready for a rough ride. The last con that I wanted to kind of bring up and skip this if you are not a spiritual person, but I would like for you to listen anyway. Um, when you're working on a house, especially older houses, especially my house, so the person that lived here was a World War II veteran. The resident that was in the house beforehand, 
you know if they were of a, a certain temperament or you know however they were energetically that energy is gonna be all up in your yard right this new house that you purchased so you have to bear that in mind so this is a soldier a soldier has been through war and terrible traumatic times that's going to be in your house so when you're now ripping that house apart when you're working on building a house it's like you're performing surgery on a house okay so approach that situation very delicately especially if you're living on site please do consider you're disrupting and you know opening and revealing all kinds of old wounds okay energetically so try to cleanse and I tell you why it's important because I didn't even know this was a thing until everything in my house broke I had to buy a new washing machine a new fridge a new things were just breaking and the the point when I realized something was wrong was when my phone broke and that was I so yes you have to be mindful of these spiritual ramifications of tearing up a whole entire old house okay all that old energy is gonna be going everywhere so all my stuff started to break and that's when you know something said to me hey you know you need to you weren't looking after yourself you need to start cleansing so if you are of the spiritual persuasion even if you're not please bear in mind you are releasing old energies the precautions that you should take is cleanse yourself regularly for the kind of energies that are going to be coming your way and energy moves remember so it's going to go up in your clothes it's going to go all over your furniture you know it goes everywhere anywhere that it can sit into it will go there after the renovations are done try to clean thoroughly bless the house thoroughly once everything is cleaned out and also be cleaning yourself regularly because that's the mistake i made and all my older appliances broke this isn't anything to do with uh, the electrical issue that I mentioned before. This is stuff that like, you know, my Bluetooth speaker, that's nothing to do with upgrading electrics. It's just a, it's, it's quite new. I bought it recently. Um, so yeah, please bear that in mind. Consideration number five, your kitchen. If you've bought a house and the kitchen's not in a bad state in terms of the units, try to keep those units, please remodeling the kitchen is going to be the most expensive part of your project uh, and i say that meaning if you're not knocking down walls or if you your upgrade is more or less cosmetic if your upgrade is more or less cosmetic then uh yeah your most expensive uh, portion of the build will be your kitchen because a brand new kitchen costs a, a basic budget kitchen mine cost about three thousand pounds Fitting the kitchen costed an extra 1,005 and these are quite basic prices that I'm saying. Uh, but if you want a nice posh kitchen unit, <laughs> that's not even the posh, poshest, you're gonna be looking at probably 10, 10K, you know? Kitchens can go up to 20K. And then if you're going to get your fitting done by the kitchen manufacturers, uh, they usually have their own fitters too, it comes with the service, they're more. So that's another thing you might want to ask your builder if they fit kitchens and if your builder isn't knowledgeable on fitting kitchens then you might want to just find either an extra kit kitchen fitter that knows how to work with uh, the particular units that the kitchen manufacturer might supply. If your builder can't do kitchen fitting and you need to find a, a kitchen fitter then you know look at their previous work ask them if they have worked with uh, this particular manufacturer so I went with magnets and uh, this is another thing as well. Try to choose a builder that has discounts. Most builders will anyway, but you know, just, just in case, I'm giving you a nice little list here. Pick builders that have uh, discount cards and good affiliation links with the local manufacturers. Uh, try to get a builder that can fit kitchens or you get a separate kitchen fitter um, or you just pay the manufacturer's kitchen fitting costs which is usually more than if you went um, independently. But if you do go independently, there might be a risk because listen, once you see those kitchen units, it is work. It took my builder about uh, two weeks to put that kitchen together. It's very precise work. <laughs> so you can't get cowboys in because as much as you think, oh, and that's another thing, when you're renovating a house, you, and you might be a bit budget constrained, you want to cut costs at every opportunity, right? uh don't cut costs when it comes to your kitchen fitting because the last thing you want is things falling down or things not aligning this has to be done professionally all right playing with a rubber band number six the budgets 
My home is a three bed house, uh, up down three bed. I just did cosmetic improvements. And by me saying just, this is not to negate the amount of work. I'm gonna try and insert some before and after pictures here. I had to upgrade, it was a big upheaval from the 60s to the 2000s. That's an awful lot of work. As much as it was cosmetic, it's and it wasn't like moving walls and moving this and moving that, it was still a lot of work. So yeah, if you're going to, if you have a three bedroom house and you're going to do cosmetic improvements, kind of outline what cosmetic is in my head. Painting all your walls, stripping all your walls, um, changing all your skirting board, getting new doors, or upgrading your central heating system, having new plumbing in, you're looking at what I paid was around 32,000 pounds. That includes all your fees, it includes uh, your labor, and it includes material. And it also includes my basic furnishings. And when I say basic, I mean like just curtains, see that TV stands, um, you know carpet your flooring as well you're gonna probably need to carpet somewhere or if you go to laminate flooring these things cost that's roughly how much you're gonna be spending if you're remodeling or upgrading a three-bedroom house it will be less if it's uh, you know a flat or um, depending on what you want to do the, the, all these things are subjective to, to what it is you want to do but I thought uh, let me just give you a quick uh, approximation I know for me when I was looking, I was like, oh my God, what the hell does, what, what do these things cost? It's good to get an approximation. So to, to kind of put your mind into, you know, where you need to be in terms of figures. So thank you so, so much for watching. Subscribe, like, share, and comment down below. See you soon. Bye.